Hey guys, welcome to Bite Me. It's me, Brooke. <laughs> the last two episodes sounded kind of janky in the sound department. It's because I didn't have my microphone plugged in. Happens to the best of us. Uh, definitely thought it was plugged in. Definitely had my earphones on and I saw the cords and it just, it wasn't plugged in. So hopefully the sound quality was pretty good, but I'm in the studio here under my Harry Potter stairs. Um, so maybe nobody will be able to tell. Yeah, we'll go with that. I am very tired. <laughs> I am in my dog grooming scrubs. I just got done grooming an Australian cattle dog. For anybody who's interested, not that anyone's ever asked me, although I say it all the time, I, I have five jobs, maybe more than that. Uh, it's on or about four or five. Uh, not necessarily in order of importance. They are uh, bookkeeping and reception at a sign shop. I'm a dog groomer. I also run a doggy daycare. I'm an Airbnb host. I do discount liquidation wholesaling. I sell books on Amazon, which by the way, if you haven't followed my friend Bill, the money badger, uh, go follow him on TikTok. He'll tell you how to do the same. And uh, then I do have the podcast and I do the TikTok thing. So... I guess you could say I'm kind of busy. <laughs> I don't know what sleep is. Yeah, I haven't slept in like, I don't know, since I was 17. And even then there was a brief period in my 20s where there was a lot of drugs going on. So there wasn't a lot of sleep going on then either. So yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's get down to our episode. Um, today on Bite Me, we are going to discuss... Uh, season one, episode 16, the truth about beating up the world. Um, I think we're all under, under a lot of stress and mental exhaustion right now. I'm definitely feeling burnt out, probably for the aforementioned reasons of having all the jobs. I think that that's our legacy as millennials. That is what the boomers designed for us. That is what the late stage capitalism, you know, has come to be. Uh, we just don't reap any of the benefits that the prior generations had, um, nor could we because of the toppling effect, you know, of, again, what the boomers designed. Um, it's an interesting time to be alive right now. And, uh, you know, my dad, he was a real piece of shit parent. Both my parents were. And it's not to say that they were, they weren't drug addicts. They weren't alcoholics. There wasn't like, you know, anything like that going on, but they were just really, they had a lot of their own emotional trauma and mental trauma they were going through from their own parents and the silent generation. And my mother was a complete narcissist and my dad was absolutely her enabler. And they didn't have a whole lot of nuggets of wisdom to impart. I, I can honestly say my brother and I raised ourselves. There wasn't a lot that we took from them, but once in a while, they would have just a grain of something uh, beneficial to offer us. And my dad, he, uh, he used to tell me every time I got upset about every little injustice, because, because I, I am very much so, I would definitely say that's one of my pet peeves. You know, I, I value justice and truth very highly. And anytime there was any sort of injustice, I would get so angry and want to just come out just this ready to roll. And he would tell me, he'd say, you can't beat up the world. You can't do it. You can't beat up the world. And it was hard to listen to words from the same person who brought the phrase, you can shit in one hand and wish in the other. Because that was something he liked to say, <laughs> too. You can shit in one hand and wish in the other and see which one fills up first, is what he would say. He was a brash man, my father. Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Um, if, you, if you follow me, I think we can surmise that I'm, I'm not one to typically... He'd advise from a cis straight white boomer male as my father was, but in those instances, you know, those phrases do stand to reason. He might have had a valid point. Choose your battles and you know, you can't you can't scream at every clerk at every store, every officer that pulls you over, the ex that won't leave you alone, the teacher that your kids having trouble with. If you go after everything all day every single day, what's going to be left for you? Nothing. You got to save a little patience for yourself. And your family, which is a lot easier said than done. So how do we do it? How do we not react to everything? In 2021, that's really tough, you know? Too much passive observing has bred inadvertent racism. Too much heat on the situation seems to have had a different reaction. 
And according to the Washington Post, millennials are the unluckiest generation in history. For us, Gen Zs and some Gen Xs, it's hard to pick those battles when there are indeed so very many, and so many affected. BLM, climate change, economic disaster, so much moral ambiguity caught up in the will to simply survive. It's no wonder the suicide rate is up. We're actually literally trying to beat up the world before it beats us up. It's hopeless. So what then? What's the answer? That's a lot to take in, <laughs> you know? We don't know yet. I think that's part of the mental exhaustion. We're all just trying to figure it out individually, every day, and every day is so different right now. I'm an Aries with complex PTSD and fight or flight response, like, I'm on it with that. Like, a cheetah can't keep up with me on fight or flight. All I know is the reaction and the will to survive. All I know is how to react and stay alive. But I do think in order to conquer these things long term, and it's going to be a while, pandemic's going to take a minute, we have to ensure that we don't burn out. You got to do something, but also take a break. You have to stay passionate and even angry. You got to practice the will to stay calm long enough for some self-care. I don't know. It's, it's different for everybody. I'm sure that looks different to everybody. For me, I think I've said it before, I live my life 15 minutes at a time. And having complex PTSD some days, that's <laughs> easier than others. I would say we definitely all have moments where we disassociate for sure. I mean, I sit here and I give advice, but, you know, I'm not perfect. I'm just trying to figure it out, too. People like to listen to me rant, and that's great, I guess. But just know I'm right here with you. If you're feeling confused and inner turmoil and overwhelmed, you got a friend in me for that, for sure. I don't have it any more or less figured out than you. Um, but hopefully, some of what I'm saying provides some solace and some sort of path to follow in times of desperation. You can have a morning ritual, you can meditate, you can take a walk. Even if while you do so, you're fuming angry, you know, take that instant to really be with yourself. Experience the emotion, but don't become it and don't let it overtake you. I mean, remember, you're a millennial, you're too good for that shit. I think that's a, uh, you can't beat up the world, means that we're really trying to take all this on, millennials, Gen Z's, Gen X's, but we can't just do it individually. <laughs> like, I know it seems like a real rat race out there, you know, you really feel like, you know, you, it comes down to wanting to control it. You want to control something. People don't like uncertainty. I think that's a big part of like the stimulus thing. You don't want to think to yourself that things are spiraling out, spiraling out of control. It honestly makes me quite fearful. The way that we've handled the pandemic makes me really resonate with the fact that, oh my God, if there was actually a natural disaster, we would be so fucked. We would be so unprepared. What are the people who are, what are the powers that be doing? <laughs> But that's why. That's why you have to take care of yourself individually, you know? Look out for yourself. Look out for your own. Don't let it overtake you. Sometimes, sometimes some of my followers tell me I'm too in touch with the world. And I think that that's true. You can't be too in touch with reality. You have to let a little of it go. Otherwise, you know, your, your brain is going to start to ingest that and you're going to have some problems like just getting out of bed in the morning. So... Go forth, ye followers, knowing that you can't, in fact, beat up the world. But you can beat up yourself plenty when you look in the mirror. I don't know. <laughs> don't do that either. <laughs> um, <laughs> for more information on how millennials are the unluckiest generation in history, you can check out the article in the, wa the article in the Washington Post and uh, on the Muse uh, you can Google the Muse. They they have a nice little 
uh, editorial on how to have a 15 minute a day ritual, 15 minute a day change your life ritual by Alex Honeyset. Um, as always, please do visit the Truthful Groomer website. Uh, the link tree is in my bio on YouTube and on my TikTok. Check me out on Twitter, Insta, and <coughs> not COVID, just a, just a tickle in my throat. Sorry. <laughs> I hope it's not COVID. Um, go over to Patreon and check out the pack. We've got a private community forum there you can check out if you ever want to be a part of it and you can support me. Um, really grateful. Speaking of 15 minutes at a time, grateful to have this with you, and we'll see you next time.